You are listening to music composed 90 years ago by Heinz Levine, my great-grandfather. He was born in Germany, was a popular composer of comic operetta. He spent a while in America and composed music for film. He was in France at the beginning of the war. He was detained in the Set Pont camp. And even there, he continued to play and entertain. But on 9th September 1942, he was sent on Transport 30 from Drancy to Auschwitz. And there his music stopped. Thank God some of it survives, an enduring and personal legacy from one of the brilliant minds, the great talents, from one of the millions of innocent human beings whose lives were extinguished and whose bodies were reduced to ash. I say thank God. I do not like the where was God in Auschwitz question. I do not like it because it is the wrong question. We might equally ask, where was God for the Armenians slaughtered by the Turks, for the innocents caught up in Stalin's purges? Where was God for the innocents amongst the Hutu and the Tutsis in Rwanda? Where was God for the indigenous people killed off by civilization's machine guns or peculiar diseases for which they had no resistance? We may as well ask, where was God when Europe was ravaged by the Black Death? Or where is he now for the huge populations of Africa who are born and die with HIV or those starving in Darfur? Our religious literature, written before any of these ever happened, tells that the angels tried to counsel God against the creation of man, because he would bring falsehood and corruption, bloodshed and slaughter, to God's pristine and beautiful world. How did God respond? God said, Even so, let there be man. The plants can't choose to do good or be better. Nature is resplendent with species who fight tooth and claw for room to live, the chance to breed, and for better resources. But none of them have courts of law or schools of philosophy. Mankind was created to do good and be better. Mankind was created to aspire higher. God created mankind to develop the world, to turn grain to bread, hide to clothing, reeds into paper and dye into ink, Letters for literature, brush strokes for art, and annotation for music, like my great grandfather's. What only we can achieve. Humanity embraces a fabulously creative as well as an awesomely destructive potential. God resides in our potential to do good. His presence among us expands and contracts according to our readiness to let him in. I struggle with the where was God at Auschwitz question and find it a little parochial and narrow. But I know that God knows, as he always has known, that man can do good as well as do evil. As I listen to the survivor stories and the tales of the righteous, I know that there were good people as well as evil ones, good Germans as well as evil ones, good Hungarians and good priests, as well as those who turned on their neighbours or closed their eyes at the slaughter. But I'm always troubled that these are a heroic minority, that these seem to be the exceptions. I wonder, where was humanity, and where were all the good people? Why were there so few? And that question, too, is not exclusive to Auschwitz, Treblinka, Sobibor, and Matazen. It's not exclusive to the Holocaust years, nor to Europe, nor the persecution of the Jews. It is a question of the present, not only of the past. When our brother's blood cries out to us, where do we find the good people? Are we the good people? Or are we just a part of the silent majority who let things happen? We pray that we may never be tested with personal danger, but may we face up to the choices that do confront us with honor and with responsibility for the welfare and betterment of humanity. When God made man, it was for the sake of those who would do good. May we be among them, and may we draw our inspiration from them. On Yom HaShoah, may we honor our ancestors by living better lives and building a better and more godly world.